Hi, this is Mrs. Outka Hill. I wanted to give you some information on how to create your ePortfolio using Google Sites. So I have navigated to my class folder. I can then click on the new button and go to more and choose Google Sites. This places the site within the folder that I'm starting from. If you just go to sites.google.com you can create a site there but it's just going to be in your Google Drive randomly so this is the easiest way to organize your drive so this is your new blank website you're going to start by creating your page title because this is an ePortfolio you're going to use your name as your ePortfolio title now the untitled site is the actual name of the file as it is located on your Google Drive. So you might want to call it um, your name ePortfolio, something that makes sense to you. Whenever you name a file, please make it sense to you and not necessarily the person next to you. This is your drive. So how can we change this up a little bit? You can change the header type. It can be a large banner. It can be a smaller banner. It can just be a, a title only. Um, but anytime that you have the top of your page, you're going to change the picture behind it. Please don't just use the, the template that they give to you. So if I click on the side of it, I can change the image. I can upload an image of my own, which makes it even more creative and more personal, gives that personal touch. Or I can use images from other locations. So this is the gallery. These are some sample pictures. Yes, you can use these, but these are really not tapping into your own creativity. You can do a search for a URL if you know of an image, or you can just search Google for them. So if you are looking for anything in particular, then let's use this one. We'll see how this fits. There we go. And then this little button over here, it will fade it out and it can adjust it. And so there's lots of settings, things that you can change here, but please make this creative. This is going to reflect you and your creativity and your um, personality. So let's talk about the things that you have on the right. You have three different tabs. Insert are the things that you can insert on your page. There are text boxes, images, you can embed just about anything. And then obviously things that are from your drive. We will be using all of these to put things into your ePortfolio. The layout is just pre-made layouts. You can make any layout that you want to, but if you wanted a very simple layout, you click and drag it over, and that's the layout that's there. You can absolutely start with a blank layout, put in a picture, put in text, change the size. This is just kind of a, a shortcut to it. And so these are also things that you can add within your ePortfolio. In addition, you can add uh, more pages. So this is just your home page or what some would call your landing page. This is that very front. It's the cover of the book kind of a page. So your home page is here. If you want to create additional pages, you're going to click on the plus button and choose new page. <clears throat> so this page is going to be about me. I click on done and now I have a brand new page. So if I click on the home page, Remember we added this to the bottom and then this is the about page. So we've got more pages that you will add. Make sure that you're staying organized. Sometimes you can use a mind map or draw out uh, what you think your content is going to be within this just to kind of keep it easily readable and for you as a creator, you know where everything is. You don't want to have so many pages that things get lost but yet you don't want to have everything on one page so that again everything gets lost be organized so you can also create themes themes are quick easy ways to kind of decorate it uh, change your font if we want it to look like this if we want it to look like this and then for each page because this is my about me page i would not have this as my background picture maybe i need to upload a picture of me maybe i need to select a different picture from somewhere else or even search something that reflects your personality so let's see what we have there we go 
So your ePortfolio should tell me a little bit about you. What, what are your personal interests? What do you like to do? Are you going into teaching art, music, PE? Or are you going into teaching math and science and history? Those things should be easily um, seen from your creativity and the, and the pictures and the backgrounds and the images that you use in your ePortfolio. So let's add some about me things. If you want a picture, we know we can go to the insert tab, we can use this, but here's a shortcut. Wherever you want things to be, just click twice and you can add things from right here. So maybe you want a text box, um, put in your name here. You can change the way that font looks. Maybe you want it to be a, a title, makes it bigger. You can change it, be bullets. Um, Decorate it, make it look yours. Images, I can go to this image here. Again, I can do a search, but I would like for you to include a professional looking photo of you. So I don't know what kind of photos I have in here, and this is gonna be mostly students, but if I had a, um, a photo of me personally, I would put this in here. It would be a, a professional picture. This is not a selfie taken in the bathroom, guys. Don't do this in your e-portfolio. Have somebody take a good picture of you. Don't have a hat on. Don't have sunglasses on. And it needs to be a somewhat close in the, if you were to go into a job interview, that those administrators who are interviewing you would immediately recognize you based on the image that you have in your e-portfolio. So, if you have a really good senior picture, if you have a good professional picture, if not, fix your hair, put on some nice clothes, have somebody take a nice picture of you to include in this. As you begin to add some of your content, this is going to be embedded. So if you have your vision board, for example, that is going to be something that you can embed. We don't want to have a link. So if, let me show you the difference. If I put in a link to my vision board, I would select my text and I can put in a link and I can just paste in that link. That would be the shared link that you gave to me when I graded the assignment. But this is not appealing. So instead of doing links that take you outside of your ePortfolio, the more you can embed, the better. And so paste your URL here. And that way, you will have the whole picture that shows up. Let's see if I can find my vision board. <clears throat> okay, here's my vision board. So if this is my vision board, I will go to my share settings, share. This isn't a PDF version. If you did it in drawings, it would look a little bit differently, but copy the link so that anyone on the internet can view it. So I'm gonna copy the link, go to my ePortfolio, double click, click on the embed link, and here's where I can paste it in. Comes up with a little preview of it. Yep, we're gonna insert that. And there it goes. This is so much better than a link that takes you outside. So you can stretch the size, you can do all kinds of things here. Um, each item that you add in your reflection, I'm sorry, each item you add in your ePortfolio, you will have a reflection piece. And so if your reflection piece is on this side, it automatically sizes things. You can change the text size, whatever you want to. But your reflection really needs to tell me what that piece of learning was about. Not only did we learn the vision board in order to create a vision and have a direction with our life and our profession, but it is also to learn about collages and photos and images and how students can use this in the classroom. So your reflection journal or your reflection piece is almost journal-like, but it is telling me about the tool that you used, what you learned, and how you can apply that in your classroom. So this is your own reflection. It is not something that you should ever look up 
nothing that a website would already have. This is really explaining to me how your learning took place. So every item will have some kind of a reflection. You will also need to include some contact information. So all of us have social media. You will need to go to your Twitter and your Instagram and you'll need to copy your Twitter handle. Where do I get that? Well, I can go to my profile and my address is right up here. So if I copy that, I can put that into my ePortfolio. And along with this, don't be afraid to add some pictures. Let's see if we can go out and find a, a good picture for social media. Okay, I'm so glad that it did this. As you arrange and rearrange things, there will be a blue line. So if I double click, right now I'm only editing this image. When I click on it and I drag it, watch, do you see there's a blue line here? It's gonna say, I'm going to add it below, or I can make it a whole section up above. I can even drag it to the side. And there we go. So that blue line is going to tell you where things are. I might want to move it over here. That even looks better yet. So as you create your ePortfolio, it will mold itself into a product by the end of the semester. It is not going to be pristine these first couple of weeks. However, your requirements for me are all listed on my contents page and this is just a sample of how you can do things. If you're looking for more information, YouTube is your source. There are so many videos out there on how to create Google Sites and specifically Google Sites for ePortfolios that you could get down that rabbit hole and be there all day. But there are a ton of sites. If you're looking for something specific, don't be afraid to go there. Um, have fun with this. This is something that should follow you for a really long time. Potentially, as you go through your undergrad and you graduate and you are interviewing for potential jobs, this is going to be your first connection with potential employers. They're going to see what you know, what you do, and most importantly, they will see that you are already familiar with technology that you will be teaching to your students. So use this as a good source and something that you're gonna follow up with later. All right, have fun with this project and we'll see what they end up like in your final. Have fun.